So to carry forward, um, it is a tradition at Roar that one of our presentations be from the patient's perspective. And this year the honor uh, falls to Marilyn Mul um, Muldoon, who is also a member of the Arthritis Patient Advisory Board. And she will be um, co-presenting with Dr. James Dunn. And they will be presenting a beginner's guide to, to Raynaud's. And could I welcome Marilyn and Dr. Dunn? There you are. Dr. Dunn, uh, I think you're up first then. I'm up first. I guess. Oh, I, I thought I was the backup. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, no. You're headlining. I'm the head. <clears throat> there you go. So, Marlon, what are you going to say? What am I going to say? Yeah. Anything that you don't. Okay, so, but you're, <laughs> okay, so you're going to talk to it from a personal perspective. I is am. that right? All right. So, that's good. So, I, I'll try and warm up the crowd for you. There you go. Thank you. Um, so my name is Jim Dunn, and I'm a physician and rheumatologist, and I run the Scleroderma Clinic down at St. Paul's, and I've been asked to talk about Raynaud's phenomenon. So the first thing is, as I'm going to start my timer now, okay? <laughs> so how many people have Raynaud's? Oh, okay. So how many people don't? Everybody else. So we see how many people we can induce in the next 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> So I'm going to give an overview so you understand what it is, where it fits into the connective tissue diseases, uh, where we are in terms of its treatment, and uh, where we might be possibly going next. And I will press a button. Okay, so essentially, I'm going to have to go this way. So it's, what it is is an exaggerated response of blood vessels. And that exaggerated response is to mainly to temperature and to emotional distress. Okay. And it manifests itself as a sharply demarcated color change. And that color change occurs where the blood vessel is in constriction, usually in your hands, but also in your feet. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail. So that's the takeaway message. That's what the definition is. And there are two sorts. One is primary and one is secondary. I'm not going to talk very much about primary except to tell you a little bit what the mechanism is. And then I'll talk a lot more about secondary. And on the right side, you can see um, a, a vascular study uh, showing small vessel blood flow. And that's a normal. And that's what a normal hand should look like. And the more red, the more blood flow. Okay? And the reason you have blood flow to your hands is because you need it for several reasons. Okay? And if I can press the next slide. No, nothing happens. Nothing still happens. Hello. Does that one work? Down. Still doesn't happen. Okay. We have a. Okay, so then just. The most if you can just use that. The most I think is on. That works? Okay, so the, where was I? Okay, so the reason you get those color changes is for two reasons. One is blood brings nutri nutrients to your tissues and takes out CO2, gives you oxygen. But the ma majority of the reason that your blood vessels change in your skin is thermoregulatory. That means a sensitivity to cold or heat, okay? So if you're hot, they dilate. If you're cold, they constrict. And that's what uh, sounds pretty easy. Unfortunately, some people are more sensitive than others, and they develop Raynaud's, and that's the classical color change you see when you don't get blood flow into your fingers. And you have consequences with that, which we'll talk about, the commonest one being that it can become numb, and it can become painful, and there are compli other complications. So the vasospasm, which is what you just saw in that picture, in primary Raynaud's phenomenon is due to one of the blood vessels, or the small blood vessels, uh, the, the triggers that cause the blood vessel to constrict are more sensitive and they stay stuck on on, okay? Whoops. So when that happens, this, the, the so-called alpha-2 receptors are more sensitive in people with primary Raynaud's and they are sensitive to cold or emotion and they constrict the blood vessels and the <coughs> blood vessels tend to stay constricted more than they should do. And that's all that happens and then you dress up in layers and you do all sorts of other things and it comes back to normal, okay? So what this slide says is how to deal with primary Raynaud's phenomenon is first of all, don't be French, because it's something like 20% of, of, of French people have primary Raynaud's phenomenon. And second, don't dress like Lady Gaga. Okay? So if you can do both of those things, you're doing pretty well. Um, 
in terms, at least for your Raynaud's phenomenon. You can dress like her for other reasons if you wish. Okay? So that's primary Raynaud's, and there are medications which are fairly standard. Secondary Raynaud's, which is the kernel that we want to talk about, is secondary to something else, okay? And it's commonly secondary to systemic sclerosis, which is scleroderma, a connective tissue disease, to lupus, to a combination of both, which is called overlap, and to a subset, which is called mixed connective tissue disease. But if you forget all about that for the second, and think just that the commonest one that we see it in is in systemic sclerosis, which is in scleroderma. And what happens in scleroderma is that 90% of the patients with scleroderma get Raynaud's phenomenon. And if you remember the last slide of the blood flow, that's what blood flow looks like when you have scleroderma and when you actually have um, Raynaud's. And it affects digital vessels in your hands, in your feet, but also tongue, nose, ears, nipples. And anywhere there's a terminal artery, which means that the artery ends and there's no collateral supply. And that also happens, funnily enough, in your kidneys, hearts, lung, and GI tract, which is interesting because it, that makes it systemic, and it also makes for interesting reports from patients who tell you they get cold from the inside out. So what the hell does that mean? When, so it may mean that some of those blood vessels are becoming constricted. And this is an angiogram, and I do have a pointer. I don't have a pointer. And what I want to show you is you should see, uh, if you can see, you should see two blood vessels coming down each digit here. And this one stops here, and this one stops here. So it either stops because it's gone into constriction, or it stops because it's structurally abnormal. And in the connective tissue diseases, specifically in scleroderma, they tend to be structurally abnormal. Oh, I got the difference. I've got the old set of slides. I'm sorry. And that's how they look when they're structurally abnormal. As you can see, there's not a very big um, area of, um, for the blood to flow through there. So that's what we have to try and dilate up. And the commonest complication is the fact that we sent you the wrong slides. Um, the fact that we have to try and dilate up that blood vessel, and in dilating up that blood vessel, we have to prevent tissue damage. And the commonest tissue damage that occurs in scleroderma and lupus are digital ulcers, okay? And digital ulcers occur as mild, moderate, and severe. And the takeaway research message that we've got is, is that when they occur, they become very indolent and are difficult to heal, okay? And what this slide says is that the average length of time a digital ulcer takes to remit is, fifth, is up to, if you have more than three actually, is up to 24, up to 24 months, okay? So that's the bad news. The good news is, is that if you can prevent them, then which is our main claim to fame, that we try and prevent them. And if you do get them, that we pr pr try and prevent you from getting new ones and give those time to heal. And th th the other thing about them, you know, the physiotherapists were here talking about how to have a good quality of life and what to wear uh, when you have a quality of life. But one of the things that happens with scleroderma is that it does, uh, and lupus for that matter, it does impact quality of life. And in scleroderma, people report three main things that impact their quality of life mainly. One is their gut when they get reflux. The second is the fact that their hand function d can deteriorate and their hands become stiff. And the third is if they have ulcers on their fingertips and they're extremely painful, they cannot do their normal daily activities, okay? So those are the three things and that's what this slide says. And the other thing this slide says is that even with our best efforts, there is recurrence of the ulcers. And that's because of the poor damage, or the damage, and unfortunately what <coughs> happens, I'll do this one, is that you get, so those are not coming up, um, if you get repeated damage, then several things happen. One is they get infected, so about 45% of the patients can have infections of their, of their fingers which need to be looked after, okay? About 10% will have to be hospitalized because of that, and some of them will actually start to lose their fingertips. I'm, I know this is a downer of a of um, a talk, but that's how it is. Um, if you look at the drugs, so here's a nice long list of drugs, and if, if someone shows you a nice long list of drugs to treat any given condition, it means no one drug is particularly good at treating the condition. 
So there is no magic bullet, okay? But there are several drugs that we treat them with and they're all vasodilators, okay? That is, they're drugs with a side effect that will dilate up the blood vessels, okay? And the commonest ones we use are ones that will block constriction, ooh, I'm done, or will help with vasodilation, okay? So here's sildenafil. I wanna show you this because I wanna cheer you up. This is sildenafil. If you show, see on the left-hand side, um, the ulcers here, um, here and here, and then they're treated for several months and the ulcers have disappeared, okay? So that's a cheering slide. And here's another cheer cheerful slide coming up, <coughs> or maybe not. Um, which says the same thing about Bosentum. So keep looking at that cheerful slide. Keep going. Yeah. You want that one? Yeah, I want this one. This is another cheerful slide. Okay, and the reason it's cheerful is because this is somebody who's on Bosentum, which is an ET blocker, and what it shows is that when you start before treatment, they've got really poor blood flow and they've got ulcers of their fingertips, and after several months of treatment, their blood flow improved, and voila, the fingertip ulcers have gone away. So finally, the general measures, and it's the take-home message, is that you have to do two things. You have to do general measures. I'm sorry about this slide. I modified it and sent the, which is somewhere out in, in space. Um, my 10 minutes are up. I modified it so, I could, so you could read it easily, but it says, please dress in layers. Don't put your hand in the fridge, okay? Get somebody else to do it for you, okay? Don't smoke, stay away from um, secondhand smoke. Uh, don't take uh, medications for colds or adrenergic medications that cause vasoconstriction um, and limit your emotional stress. Easier said than done, okay? And here's the other takeaway message. So there's just been a recent study done. So we've done studies looking at these drugs at St. Paul's, but there's been a recent study done on patients with secondary Raynaud's phenomenon, as to whether they could determine when and how severe their Raynaud's attack was going to be. And the bad news was they tended to underestimate it significantly. So they tended to underestimate the number, and they tended to underestimate the severity, and they tended to underestimate the possible complication. So in that, on that happy note, that's all the more reason to maintain the general measures because it's to, to, to try and get people to dress in layers, I should have been a dentist, um, it, because it's basically like pulling teeth, uh, especially young women, uh, it's hard to make them do that. But, it's, but we'll get the, the real skinny, I guess, from, from somebody who does that as how easy or how it, it is or not.